Hi, Julia Usher, Recipes for a Sweet Life. It's still Easter here in the Recipes for a Sweet Life kitchen, and I've got a quasi-edible project for you this time. From time to time, I like to do crafting and cooking projects that aren't cookie-related, and this is one of those times. It's a welcome respite from a lot of royal icing. Today, we're making decoupaged Easter eggs, which is a wonderful and easy way to decorate eggs for the holiday seasons. So whether you're gonna be blowing the eggs to have them for posterity, or hard boiling them to eat them, you can use this decorating method because everything we're applying to the outside, though not edible, is certainly non-toxic and isn't gonna be harmful to the hard boiled egg inside. I'm gonna be working with all natural dyes, so we're gonna be talking a little bit about how to make those dyes, and then we'll get into the decorating process. What we'll need to start for making the dyes, nothing much really, it's a rather simple process, just water, natural elements to color them. I've got a tea dye, a beet dye, and we're gonna be making a saffron yellow dye here on set. You need a little bit of vinegar to actually set the dye. Once it is brought to a boil and is the color you want, then you add a little bit of vinegar to it. And then you strain it through a strainer with some cheesecloth, so all you're left with is crystal clear dye to submerge your eggs in. Of course, we'll need some hard boiled eggs. I've got those off to the side. For decorating, we're going to be using a number of different elements. Here's an example of what we're headed towards. I particularly love this little guy. It's been decoupaged with decorative napkins, beautiful decorative napkins, a little wafer paper butterfly, which is in fact edible, and then inedible little baubles from the craft store. And they've all been applied with non-toxic glues, so the egg should be perfectly safe for eating. Lots of other options for decorating though. We've got the napkins we talked about, these little self-adhesive baubles we talked about. Here are some of those wafer paper butterflies that I just love. And I'll have all the sources for this wafer paper, which is completely edible, in the video description. These can be applied with corn syrup instead of glue. And so you would have something completely edible on the outside. And of course, a variety of little buttons and things also from the craft store can be employed. And oftentimes I like to just wrap them with a little bit of washi tape to give them a little stripe down through the center. So we'll be, I'll be doing at least a couple of different styles in the video to give you some food for thought, so to speak. So natural food dyes. Essentially you want to get your vegetable or plant matter into a pan in about an inch layer. If it's tea, I use tea bags. I generally use about 10 to two cups of water. If it's beets, I might chop up one beet and put it in the bottom of a medium sized saucepan and cover it with water. Again, about two cups. I tend to dye in these little deli containers just because they're com conveniently deep enough to hold one egg without much of the top showing and they contain about two cups of liquid. I've got two that I made yesterday and I've had some eggs sitting in them overnight in the fridge. And I just wanted to give you a sense of the type of color you can expect with natural dyes. If you're looking for something smooth and uniform and perfect, then natural dyes are not for you because there tends to be a lot of irregularity and they do change color over time. If you're using them for display, do expect them to fade after two to three days. Some dyes are more fast than others, more color fast than others. I tend to love to work with saffron because creates a really smooth, even bright yellow color quite naturally and not with much dyeing. This is a tone that I got after about an hour of dyeing, maybe less in the dye. Again, artificial colorings will dye much more quickly. So if you're in a rush, that may be the way to go. Beet, on the other hand, requires a lot more dyeing time. This was dyed the same amount of time as my yellow egg. It came out of the beet dye bright purpley red, but then Within an hour or two, it oxidized, I guess it's oxidized, to kind of a brownish purple color and somewhat faded as well. Just show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna pull out this beet egg that I've had sitting in dye overnight, and we're just gonna see what it does over the course of this video, how it changes color. Notice how gorgeously purple it is right now. And same thing, I'm gonna pull out my tea stained one, and here's what I mean about the irregularity that you can expect with natural food colorings. They take to different areas of the eggshell with different intensity as well, so you might get some spotting. But for this project, I'm going for a vintage effect, so that kind of spotted look isn't at all problematic for me. Now the tea dyes will stay much more color fast a lot longer, 
This is an example of a tea stained egg and that was basically the color it was when it came out of the vat as was the yellow one. It didn't fade much at all but the beet one fades quite a lot. So there are a whole host of vegetables and fruits that you can experiment and, and spices that you can experiment with in making dyes. I just encourage you to read some of the literature that I have in my link and also to experiment and see what you like best. I'm going to work with the yellow today because it's my personal favorite. We're going to make that up and dye my last remaining egg with it and just compare and contrast the intensity of color when it sits in that yellow dye. Okay, so to make a dye, I've got my two cups of water in here. It's a little over two cups because I'm going to boil this for a period of time and I want to end up with two cups. So I'm putting in about two and a quarter cups. For saffron, which is an expensive herb, you might want to use turmeric instead. I just use, a, it's very potent as well it's in terms of the color it imparts, so you don't need much. I'm just going to put a couple little pinches of it into the two cups of water. And you can see it's already changing color, but it'll become much more intensely yellow as I put it on the heat. Now those few pinches of saffron have been steeping in hot liquid only for about five to ten minutes. You can see it's already a rich golden color, but the next step is to strain out that saffron because those threads will interfere with the dyeing process and leave little spots on the eggs. So I'm just gonna, I've just i got cheesecloth here just to make sure no saffron gets through my sieve because my sieve's kind of a, a wider mesh sieve. So I've got about two cups of liquid here. I didn't boil it down very much, so I'm going to add two tablespoons of vinegar while it's hot and give it a spin. We'll let it cool ever so slightly and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this egg into my saffron dye and this one into the beet dye at the same time just to give you a general sense of how intensely these different dyes will dye your eggs over the same period of time. So just looking back at these eggs I pulled at the beginning of the video, there has been a little bit of change in color. You'll notice that it's no longer that intense purple, it's kind of dulling out, and I see some stripes forming across the center and some spotting down here. That's extremely typical. I will assure you that this egg came out not quite that dark out of the vat, but it did almost immediately begin kind of speckling and separating. So again, if you don't like the lack of control with dyeing with natural food colors, then don't. But I, I love this kind of spotted and speckly effect. I think it looks more natural, and I think it's really in keeping with the theme we've got going here. And I think the saffron dye will be the best if you are looking for a constant and consistent color because it does quite well. That being said, let's test that real time and hope that what I said holds true on video. I'm going to put this egg into my saffron dye here. A little bit's poking out of the top. I should have put that in a little bit of a shallower container and I should have let it cool a little bit longer because it cracked my shell when I put it in there. And I'm going to put the other one in the beet dye at the same time, and we'll see how they look when at the end of the shoot, which one's a little bit more intense. So since I love the yellow so much, I'm going to start by decorating the saffron dye to egg. And I'm going to use some beautiful napkins. I want to, it's because it's so yellow, I want to use a napkin that has some of the same colors in it. And this is just a really rough process of I'm being pretty random about it. So I'm going to tear out sections of the napkin that I like. I particularly like these flowers here. And we're just going to be gluing them onto the egg. The only thing you want to do is just trim it narrow enough. I like to see a little bit of the real egg, the actual egg peeking out at the top and the bottom. So I just want to rip it narrow enough. You could also cut it, but I like the rough edge. And to glue that down, I'm going to use Mod Podge, which is a non-toxic glue. And you can either paint the surface of the egg. Sometimes it will change the color of the dye when the glue goes down. Or you can paint the napkin itself. I find it's a little easier to paint the egg. And you can go down over the top of it too. This, this is a, a gloss finish, so it'll dry with a tiny bit of shine, not much. I just got a little piece that's loose here on the end that I just want to tack down. And I just don't like any of the ends sticking up. This will eventually dry nice and dry. I think I want to make this kind of a bold egg with a little stripe down the middle. So I'm going to take some of this washi tape, which is self-adhesive tape from the craft store, 
And I've actually cut this particular length in half just because it's a little too wide to wrap all the way around. It'll cover too much of my napkin and it also won't sit flush to the edge of the egg very well. And I'm just going to lay this as an accent, I think, towards the bottom of the egg so as not to interfere too much with the flowers. I always have a front face that I like and put forward. And so if these don't meet in the back, it's not a big deal because this is going to be the back of the egg. But I am going to trim those off at a cross point. So it's almost done. I think it just needs one little accent. I like to give a little dimension to the eggs as well. And for that purpose, we're going to glue on a little bauble from the craft store, a little bead. I think would look lovely right here or maybe off to the side of the rose. And for that, I'm going to turn to a different type of glue, also non-toxic. This Elmer's is glue pen. It helps adhere these bigger baubles just a little bit more quickly. The Mod Podge doesn't really work for this purpose. I'm going to set that there and then set it aside to dry. We've got a fun little decorative egg for Easter. Here's how the saffron one is looking after, what, five to ten minutes? Turns out my beet one's looking pretty, pretty powerful too, but it's very spotted and you can see it's draining its color, it is draining off the sides much more quickly. Okay, on to a slightly different effect. And I think I will try to work with this one though it's a little bit wet right now, just because I do like the color and I think it's going to marry well with what I have in mind. I want to put this little pink butterfly on it using more pink accents from this napkin. So less of a yellow egg, less of a yellow and brown egg, and a little more purple and pink to it. Now most of these napkins are double thicknesses. I usually apply the double thickness just so you're less likely to see through to the egg underneath. And I'm going to use the small side of this rather than the big side because my dye here is still fresh. I think it could come off if I use too much glue directly on it. You'll notice how it's changing the shade of it too. That'll be only temporary though. At this point I'm just kind of rolling it around in my hand to make sure it's nicely affixed to all surfaces of the egg. And it looks pretty nice except for right down there. I could use another little piece of paper on the back to fill that out, but I'm not going to worry about that for now. I'm just going to finish off the front. And for that, I'm going to turn once again to my Elmer's to stick down the wafer paper butterfly. I think right here about dead center would be nice. And that just gives a fun little dimension to the egg that's a little bit unexpected. I actually perch it in my washi tape there so it doesn't roll around so much. And I think it needs a little bit more glitz though, just a little bit of shimmer. So I'm going to put either one of these self-adhesive blue beads in the center. I think the blue one because it picks up the, it's kind of got a purple quality about it too. I think that'll pick up the other tones in the egg and look just quite nice. And that's a self-adhesive piece. It's got a little adhesive on the back that's sitting on the butterfly itself and not directly on the egg. So that's another beautiful effect. Now, one thing to note is the natural food colorings do kind of change the normal eggshell sheen on the egg. It kind of dulls it out. If you don't like that, you can give it a temporary gloss. This lasts maybe for a day or so by just brushing on a little bit of olive oil or vegetable oil of any kind. And that can sometimes heighten the color as well temporarily. But that's just beautiful. If you are intending to eat these, then of course they would need to be eaten almost immediately or you'd have to refrigerate them. And if you're going to do that, I would make sure they dry completely before you put them in the fridge. Otherwise the papers may never dry. And then once they're completely dry after an hour or two, stick them in the fridge and they should be safe for eating uh, within a normal period of time, a few days. Okay, let's check these eggs. I've been using my hands because I'm prone to using them in the kitchen, but a slotted spoon will keep them looking a lot nicer than mine do. So here's what the saffron looks like 
after what might be 15 minutes in the dye, is still a pretty pale yellow. I think we need to give it at least an hour to get it that really intense shade we saw over there, or use a little more saffron in the actual dye. This one is also looking still very pale, but again, a lot more spotted. So this is what I mean about this not being as color fast. You'll just see a lot more speckling on it almost immediately, and it will tend to accentuate as it dries. Okay, so I've been busy making eggs. I encourage you to get really creative with it. Use an assortment of background colors. You'll see I use saffron, beet, tea. I also use just plain white eggs to skip a step. If you don't want to dye, you don't have to, because the decoupaging can cover a good portion of the egg and make it look beautiful. Here's an example of that, just the natural egg color. Now, as far as presenting, there are a number of ways to do that. I love just presenting them in a really neutral egg carton. I think they look striking just as they are. They really sort of pop off the background of the container. This could be set in the center of a table. You could, of course, arrange them in an Easter basket. I also like the concept of them as an individual presentation. So I'm thinking for my Easter table, I'm going to stick this little charger in front of each place setting so that everybody has their own individualized egg. This is sitting on transferware, which I love. You know that from my teacup video. I've got a little butter plate underneath it and I've just nested it in a little bit of paper grass. And I think it looks really beautiful. I also want to point out one other egg that I didn't dye at all. This again started with an all white egg. But the thing that's unique about it is it uses all edible elements on the outside. So the birds here are edible wafer paper that I secured with corn syrup, as are these flowers. This, you can recall from one of my other videos, is one of my piped royal icing roses and leaves, just piped directly on top and stuck down with a little royal icing glue. The added gold luster is edible gold luster extended with a little bit of extract and sponged on to give that kind of speckled effect. So if you don't want to use glues, even though they are non-toxic, you can apply all of the same stuff, more or less, with edible materials. So please get creative with this project, enjoy it, welcome the kids in, it's very, very easy, and have a great Easter. Till next video, live sweetly.